Okay, so the first thing I wanna make sure we're clear on is this is actually not called an outlet, it's called a receptacle. Now, if you go into a hardware store and you ask for an outlet, uh, they should know what you're looking for, what you're referring to. But if you're talking to an electrician or if you're talking to a home inspector when it comes to uh, rewiring your house or planning an addition or some big project, then you wanna be sure to get the right terminology. So this is actually called a receptacle. There's actually a difference between the quality and the type of receptacles. Uh, one of the big differences that a lot of people don't know is that there's a residential grade outlet or receptacle, and there's also a commercial grade uh, receptacle. So uh, there are some differences between these two types. Uh, obviously the commercial one is a little bit more expensive, but it has some other features in here that make it well worth the extra investment. And this is your residential grade, which is the most common. Uh, these are about 50 cents to a dollar typically. And these range between about two and $4 at the time of this video. Also, we really don't talk too much about this in this video, but this is a GFCI outlet. Uh, you can see here it's got a couple buttons on the front to test and it uh, looks a little bit bulkier and blockier uh, than a typical uh, receptacle, which is which is here. Hopefully you can see the, the difference there. We'll cover the basic wiring techniques and the basic parts of a normal receptacle, which will help you when you're installing one of these. But there's some other things that you need to know about this specifically, and we're planning on covering this in a different video. So once that's up, we'll have a card on the screen and you can go and check that out if this is the job that you're going to tackle. All right, so first of all, let's go over the basic parts of a receptacle. On the sides here, these screws are actually called uh, terminals. These are where you connect the wires. The brass or the gold-sided screws are for the hot wires coming into the receptacle, and the silver or just the chrome-colored screws are for the neutral wires. Another way to tell which side is for the neutral and which side is for the hot is on the front, you've got the smaller slot. The smaller slot is always gonna be for a hot wire and the larger slot is for the neutral. Now on the front of the receptacle, there's a couple things that you should be aware of. Um, the first one is probably the most obvious. There's this stamp here that says TR. TR stands for tamper resistant. And that's just a safety measure to prevent someone from sticking something in one of these openings here and getting electrocuted like a kid, for example. This is just a tamper resistant, uh, not tamper proof protection that comes on the newer receptacles. Um, right here you can see this is probably the most common style where you've got these white uh, things on the inside here that, for the tamper resistance. But there's another kind that you might also run into that's starting to become more popular. And you can see here it still says TR, but you can't really see uh, anything inside. And that's because the plastic that's protecting it is black. If you look here, this specific receptacle is rated for 15 amps and 125 volts. Something that you'll want to double check before you replace this, uh, the existing one in your house, is make sure the amperage rating is correct. So another common option here is a 20 amp. I want to point out something really important on the back of these outlets, and that is this symbol right here. This says CU, and there's another circle here that says AL with a slash through it. What that means is the majority of the receptacles are designed to work with copper wire only. That means if you have a home that was built that has aluminum wire, um, these receptacles are not designed to work with that wire and it can in fact be dangerous to install these in a home that uses aluminum wire. If you have aluminum wire, I highly recommend that you consult a professional because it is a little bit trickier to get a good connection and to get a connection that's safe. In order to figure out if you have aluminum wire, if you look at one of the receptacles when you start working on your job, if the wire color is not copper in color and it's a silver color, that probably means you have aluminum wiring and you need to seek professional advice. Wiring in modern homes come in a format like this that's got three wires enclosed in a plastic or rubberized sheath. And the wires that are inside of it look like this. So you're gonna have a black wire. The black wire is gonna be your hot wire that carries the power. The white wire, or it could also be like a grayish wire, um, that's gonna be your neutral wire. And then the bare metal wire uh, is gonna be your ground. And the ground sometimes is enclosed in a green insulation uh, sheath instead of like this white or this black here, it'll be in a green uh, casing. And so uh, that's gonna be your ground that you need to hook up as well. So black is hot, white is neutral, and copper or green is your ground.
Sometimes the hot wire will be a different color or you might have multiple colors in the box where your receptacle is. If you have a red wire or sometimes yellow or blue, um, as well as a black wire hooked up to a receptacle, that's probably because that outlet is a switched outlet, which means a wall switch controls the power to the outlet itself. Um, if that's the case, the other thing to look for is on the side of the receptacle on the hot side, so the brass terminals, if this little tab here, you can see this tab tab right here if that's broken off that means it's a switched outlet so those are kind of your two confirmation points that the outlet is switched and if you're replacing um, this outlet or this receptacle then you'll need to make sure that this tab is broken off as well before you install the replacement if you don't do that and you leave this tab in place then what will happen is the receptacle will stay on all the time and uh, the switch won't be able to turn it off Okay, so first I'm gonna demonstrate what not to do. So this is the method that is not preferred. This is the uh, stab in or the push in connection method. Um, basically, I'm just showing you this so uh, you know what it looks like. But uh, this is just a spare piece of uh, ground wire that I have here. And what you would do is you would take the wire, the normal wire that you'd have, so if it's the neutral or if it's a hot, depending on what, what side you're working on, you would take the wire and then you would push it in this hole, right? And then to release it, what you would do is you would put a small, uh, like a small flat blade screwdriver into this slot here, and that will release the tension on this wire and then you can pull it out. Uh, again, that's just for demonstration purposes so that way you know um, what that looks like. I'm gonna show you the most common and the most universal method, which is side wiring. The side wire method is the most common way of wiring an outlet, and it's actually the most universal as well. All we have to do is get wire underneath this terminal and tighten the screw down in order to make our connection. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. Let me show you what it looks like uh, to get the wire stripped off and the different processes we can use. There is a wire strip gauge on the back of the receptacle that you can use to figure out how much insulation you need to remove from the wire, but the strip gauge is really designed for the push in or stab in method on a residential receptacle. If you're installing a commercial receptacle, then that gauge is going to be for the back wire method. So if you're gonna be using a side wire method, like I'm gonna show you here, what you need to do is remove three quarters of an inch to a full inch of insulation in order to have enough copper exposed to be able to wrap around this terminal completely. If you're not quite sure how much uh, three quarters to an inch of insulation is, then you can use this as a good starting point. This is typically about a half of an inch in length. And so as long as you strip the insulation off of the wire that's just a little bit longer than this, you should be in the ballpark for the amount of wire that you need to use around the terminal. The one thing you really wanna be sure of when you're stripping the insulation off the wire is to not go too deep. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I match this up to like a 16 gauge when this is a 14, um, Basically, I'm gonna cut through the copper as well, right? So if I do that, the insulation will be able to be removed. But if you can see this in here, I'm not sure if I can get that on camera, you can kind of see it reflecting here. Basically, I nicked the copper as well. So if you nick the copper, it's a point uh, that could fail over time. So you wanna be careful not to use a gauge that's too small. It's better to go with a gauge that's too big first, like a 12 gauge if you're not sure if it's a 12 or 14 gauge wire. Go with the 12 gauge, gauge first, see if it can actually cut through the insulation and you can pull the insulation off. If not, you'll know it's a 14 gauge wire and then you can use the 14 gauge uh, setting on your wire strippers to strip the insulation off. There's a couple different methods you can use in order to be able to make this connection. The goal really is to have this wire become a hook and uh, this can be called a few different things. I've heard it referred to as a C hook, a J hook, and even I think a shepherd's hook. But um, basically what you wanna do is just make this a hook so it can hook around the terminal and hook on. I can show you what this looks like with this copper ground wire. Um, basically you have a hook that looks just like this, or very similar to it, and then you can hook it over the terminal and you can tighten it down. Now I actually hooked this on the wrong way. As you can see, the end of this hook is pointed to the left and we really need it to be pointed to the right. The reason for that is, is when we tighten down any of these screws, the screw tightens in a clockwise fashion and we want this screw to tighten with the direction of the copper wire. If we have this facing the other direction and we tighten the screw down, then it's gonna tend to want, the wire is gonna tend to want to unravel and come loose and we don't want that, right? We want this to be a nice tight connection so we wanna make sure the end of this hook is on the right hand side. 
All right, so a couple different ways to make this. Um, one method that I like to use is the end of some needle nose pliers. All you have to do is grab the end and then twist the needle nose pliers in order to make a hook. So you just twist it and that forms your hook. Then you can go back to your receptacle and then you can just hook this over the terminal. And one of the goals that you want to have is you don't want the insulation underneath the terminal screw, but you do want the insulation to be just touching the screw. So in this case, this looks to be just about right. Uh, you also don't want the end of the hook extended past the edge of this plastic here beyond the edge of the receptacle. So this is up underneath the screw, which is just fine. And this would be a good enough to connection to tighten down. If you have wire strippers like this, you can also use this hole as well, one of these holes as well. All you have to do is stick the wire on the end and then bend the wire over. It's a very similar process to using needle nose pliers. I find that the needle nose pliers though, I can get a little bit better of a hook than I can with the method uh, using the strippers. Now the third and the fastest way of getting this wire installed is you don't even have to form the hook before you put this on the terminal. There's this little hook here that's built into the underside of these receptacles and that's designed to grab the wire. So basically I'm putting the wire in here, right? And I think you can see this here. I've got this underneath uh, the terminal screw and I have it up against this little hook and all I have to do is bend the wire around the terminal screw and that forms my loop. And you can see here, I stripped off the right amount of wire too because the wire is gonna be right underneath the terminal screw. So now that I've bent this around here, all I have to do is tighten this terminal down and this connection's done. Here's an example of too much insulation that was removed from the wire. You can see how uh, the copper is extended past this receptacle and it can short out a lot easier. So this is with too much insulation removed and then this is with not enough, right? So you can see here that there's insulation uh, underneath this terminal and that's going to provide a poor connection here. And since this isn't a switched outlet, it doesn't matter what end you use, like what terminal you use, either top or bottom, it's completely fine. Also, obviously I'm using some spare wire here. Uh, you would actually wire this to the electrical wire that's in the wall, but since this is just a demonstration, I wanna make that clear that uh, you would actually use the wire that's in place, and I'm just using some spare wire uh, for this demonstration. So that's what a simple receptacle looks like wired. Um, if you have a receptacle that's in the middle of a run, so basically this isn't the last receptacle on a circuit, that, that there's another receptacle chained off of this one, then what you'll do is you'll also have another set of these wires within that box that you'll wanna hook up, another neutral and another hot wire that you'll wanna hook up to these other terminals here. And that just continues the circuit to the other receptacles uh, that are down the line. If this is the last receptacle in a circuit, then you'll just have two wires and then the connections will look just like this. Last but not least, I want to give you all a couple of suggestions when you actually go and install this in the box. Again, make sure all of these terminals are tightened down regardless whether or not there is a wire behind the terminal. That'll help prevent any kind of shorts inside of the box. Also, it's always a good practice to wrap this with electrical tape, just do a couple of wraps with electrical tape around the outside to help cover these terminals as well. And that basically gives you another layer of protection against shorts. On commercial grade or industrial grade receptacles, there's also another option that you have to install the wire. If we go to the back here, you can see that there's these slots that are lined up underneath the terminals. And if you use these slots, this is called back wiring. So all you have to do is have a straight piece of uh, copper that's exposed. All you have to do is strip the insulation off and then it will insert into one of these slots. Once it's inserted in one of these slots behind the plate, let's get this in focus here, behind the plate, then all you have to do is tighten the terminal down and it will make your connection. You can also, if you have multiple wires to make a connection with, you can use up to two slots per terminal. So to me, this is probably the best option that you have uh, when it comes to installing a receptacle. Something else to keep in mind is not only on commercial grade receptacles uh, is this an option, but you also have this as an option on your GF CI outlets as well. So obviously you have the terminal screw here uh, like you do on all the other outlets where you can make a J hook, but you also have this uh, back wire option as well. 
So keep that in mind if you're installing a GFCI outlet. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a GFCI outlet with the uh, push-in or the stab-in connections on the back, but uh, I have seen them with these uh, back wire options. So I uh, wanted you to be aware that there's also another option to make these connections, and to me it's the preferred method. If you haven't already subscribed to the Top Homeowner channel, I encourage you to do that. Our goal here is to help you become the very best homeowner that you can possibly be. We have different video topics ranging from product reviews to home repair topics and even some remodeling items, so you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.